inside a real nice home, real nice. Just feels like I've gone downhill. It's nearly half of our property. And it says they'll pay us for it. Yeah, fair market value. I'd love to see what the county thinks is fair. We're gonna have to move the trail. You can't use all caps. It's just a couple. <laughs> It's a couple places, you know, I want to show that I feel strongly about it. <laughs> you know who feels this strongly about things? Crazy people. It's so exciting that we at Florida Rep are nurturing new plays. Uh, it was always a dream right from the beginning, 19 years ago, that we would do this. But, uh, but it was like a dream like having the art stage, a second theater. Uh, uh, but. For the, our first 16 years, we basically were taking, stealing from the American canon of great plays and taking hot shows from New York and, and, and uh, great American classics. And during those first 16 years, we were, we've been nurturing actors and directors and designers and administrators and, and interns. And, uh, but we haven't nurtured the playwright. And it's uh, three years ago when we made this commitment to do a new play series and every year to do a world premiere uh, we're finally giving back to the canon of great plays and helping playwrights nurture those plays. This story in particular is incredibly poignant and powerful and important I think because of the time that we live in. It's about working class people trying to uh, make their way in the world as best they can and hope and reach for that American dream that has been true for generations. People walk in and they see a double wide trailer um, and they see these characters, they see, you know, Sharon takes off her coat and she's wearing the Walmart vest and we get a re we've gotten a reaction every night from that of people like chuckling and in recognition, they think they know what this play is gonna be about. Um, but what I'm doing, what I'm hopefully doing with not just the play, but with every character is showing the stereotype and then cracking it open. The line that really, uh, to me, like, is so powerful in that play and epitomizes the play is when Jim Starkey uh, says, my grandfather owned a house, my father owned a house, why can't I own a house? And it was so beautiful because he's a hardworking man, he's working, you know, every week of his life since high school in a factory. His wife works for Walmart. These are hardworking people, and yet they can't seem to capture that American dream. They're living paycheck to paycheck, and the reality is there is a lot of people in America who, who live that way, um, and that's okay. I completely relate to the struggles that uh, this family is going through. I'm, my family went through it as well. So it's about uh, the obstacles that you face in life trying to raise a family and getting past them and um, staying focused on hope and love and family. I grew up in this kind of environment. Like I grew up in like rural northeastern Maryland uh, where farm country butts up against trailer park country butts up against very small town America. And when I go to the theater, rarely do I see that portrayed on stage, at least uh, with the kind, like, in a way that I would recognize, in a way that the people I grew up with would recognize. At the very beginning, I was f fortunate to get to do the first reading with our company of uh, Double Wide. And seeing the playwright, he was really very shy and soft-spoken, and it was hard to tell, you know, what kind of person he was. As it evolved, it was apparent that he was talking about himself or his family or people he knew. And it was um, a considerable difference from what the general public will have of people who live in trailer parks. The first time Double Wide was ever read in Florida was actually not at Florida Rep, it was at Gulf Shore Playhouse, uh, about an hour from here in Naples. Um, I had submitted it to their new play festival um, and they chose it and it was read there in uh, the fall of 2014. Um, and it got a really great reception from from the, uh, the audience there. Um, and then it was, a, I guess, about a year later when I received an email from Jordana Frazier at the National New Play Network, and they said, well, Florida Rep is looking for submission for scripts for their 
new play festival. Uh, if you have something they might like, please send it along. Um, and I did, and it got chosen for that play festival in May 2016. And I came down and we workshopped it, and then Florida Rep chose it to round out its 19th season. You can't hide in there all day. I need you to pack. A little privacy, please. This is what you have to look forward to. I got two bathrooms. She can pick one and hog it to her heart's content. You say that now. So the National New Play Network is uh, is celebrating its 20th year, just like Florida Rep is about to. So we've been around for about the same amount of time. They work out of D.C., out of a little office uh, at the Woolly Mammoth Theater. Florida Rep, which is an associate member of the NPN, produced uh, a reading of this D.C. playwright, Stephen Spotswood's new work, Double Wide, last season as a part of their third annual playlist. Audiences loved it, and Bob and the crew decided to include it in this 2016-17 season. So then they let NNPN know that they had decided to mount a full production, and NNPN reached out to other member theaters via our monthly alert system to let them know that the folks at Florida Rep thought that other readers, other people should read this play, and that they would like it. We need at least three theaters to make a partnership. So a second theater came on and said they wanted to produce it, and then a third, and then in this case, a fourth, and a partnership was born. The work that they do is, is really important, and no, one's been, no one had done it before, because Florida Rep might have plays and playwrights and actors and artists that we love, but it's, it's, other theaters want to know who those plays and playwrights are. Who are the actors you work with? And so what the National New Play Network has done, uh, in a very broad and general sense, is that they've, they've created a, a clearinghouse or a place where all the member theaters can say, I'm excited about this play, I'm excited about this playwright. First productions are difficult to get, but second productions can be even harder to get. Um, because there, there is the cachet of having a world premiere. Like that, so that, that gives first productions sort of a bump up. Um, but second productions, you, theaters might be, well, we're, it's not gonna be the world premiere, we don't get to say that, and also it's only been tested once. Um, with a rolling world premiere, that is, like that anxiety is off the table. And it will be exciting because it's going to be done at four or three other places um, just in this round to see how it changes, you know. Um, decisions were made here because we're in an intense thrust, very tiny. Um, the audience is very much part of the process here. And yet one of some of the others that they're going through are proscenium's or larger houses. How will it change the nature of the play? Extremely thankful that we had Stephen, our playwright, in the, um, the, during the rehearsal process because um, <laughs> if it weren't for him being there, I would have had like certain things misinterpreted and and not maybe not the complete correct way, but that he may have dreamt it to be. If we did have a question about how something works or is there part of a story that maybe we're not getting or what is here that I don't know, then we could go to him and be like, hey, what's up with that? What do, what do we do here? He's so interested and willing to collaborate. He is a playwright who really sees him, I think, I'm saying for him, but uh, sees himself as part of a team that's going to bring something to life. And so he is very, very open to suggestions and at the same time, very clear on what the story he wants to tell. So Maureen Heffernan is uh, the director of this piece. I've had the good fortune of working with Maureen. Oh man, alive. I've known Maureen for 15 years. Um, she is a dear friend. Uh, she's an inspired artist. She's an amazing collaborator. Um, she creates a room that is generous and open and everyone's voice is heard. I've never worked with Maureen before, so as an actor it's always a gift to get to work with a brand new director and get to see a perspective that, you know, obviously as an actor who's completely invested in the point of view of your character, you don't see it from the outside. And Maureen was able to add so many little nuances and details. She's super smart. She knows what she wants from the show and she has her vision. Um, 
and she knows how to help get the actors to where she wants the piece. I'm Chuck. I'm tutoring Lorelai. That's today. It's supposed to be, but she's a... You know, I can go. No, she mm. needs the help. Have a seat. <laughs> okay. We've also been gifted with a wonderful cast on this. Uh, two of the people uh, I know very well, Carrie Lund and Rachel Bertram, I've had the opportunity to work with them on multiple occasions, so I knew what they could bring to this. I'm playing Coral, the grandma, the mom, and I think the purpose for my character in telling this story is that I bring a little levity to the difficulties that each of the others are encountering. You're going to be walking around with your shoulder half out of his socket like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Carrie Lund is a, she is a comedian extraordinaire. If there is a laugh to be had in any way, shape, or form, Carrie Lund can land it, man. Greg's a new member of the, well, he, he was brought in, new actor to the company, and in every way served as a perfect star for the show. It might as well, I might as well have tailor-made Big Jim for him. He slipped into that role uh, like it was a bespoke suit. It was, it's been brilliant. Um, he, I'm not even sure he acts, really. I think he just, just is himself on stage. No, I won't. Yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> if I were to open up a dictionary and look up the word man, Greg Wiener would be right there. He is so talented. He is so funny. He's such an overall great man. But Big Jim's not an easy character to play. Uh, there's got to be, I mean, you have to love him from like scene one. Like you, you just have to, otherwise the rest of the play is not gonna hold together. Um, and Greg takes, has taken everything I've given him and like executed it flawlessly. I think Stephen did a beautiful job of, of creating a very complex woman who has deep, deep, deep love for her husband and her daughter and her mother-in-law. Rachel Bertram Powers is you know, an ensemble member here, and I'm sure everybody lauds her with praise upon praise, but I, I couldn't have asked for a better wife in this show. I mean, she's an experienced, giving, present, um, funny person in general, and then on stage, she's just, um, she fills me up with, with all kinds of life. So Dylan, sweet Dylan, he is, uh, he was an intern here at Florida Rep uh, last year. He came uh, uh, so enthusiastic, um, so ready to do this, very skilled. Once we started working with Dylan um, in, in the second workshop and in rehearsals, um, he brought so much to Chuck, um, both in terms of just, uh, I want to say likability, but I mean part of it is likability. Um, like Dylan is just likable. You want to root for Dylan. Zookeeper told me, "Watch out, not to get too close." And he said, "Just because it was in a cage, the tiger is still a wild animal. It could still rip my arm off." Okay. You are the tiger. I was really intimidated by him for no reason. First day, I just I just looked at him. I'm like, oh my god, his hair is all like whoosh. He must be like really intimidating. Now we have this great chemistry, and I hug him every time I see him. And he's because he's so nice, and he smells like Old Spice, and I love Old Spice so much. I said some iconic things about you. iconic things about yeah. me. What did you say about me? It would, I well, you'll find out. <laughs> and then this light. <laughs> That's Isabel. Not only has Isabella brought like straight out raw talent. Um, she has brought the perspective of a 17 year old girl to this role where uh, like both Maureen and I have uh, been using her as our like ersatz dramaturg for Lorelei and just talking about oh how would you respond in this? Okay well let's think about how, how we can transfer that to Lorelei. I first saw her in a production last season of Romeo and Juliet and then I got to see her do the staged reading of In Vivo last year um, and I was really just in awe. I was like, she is so young and 
talented and has a lot of potential. And so when Jason told me that they were looking at her um, for the role of Lorelai, I was like, of course they're looking at Bella Centron. Of course they are. Getting to be a teenager playing a teenager is was a good choice because I feel like the fact that I know what it's like right now, we've all been through that horrible teenage emo phase. I can 100% perfectly like understand everything she says and how dramatic she can be at times. I said, you won't like any guy in dating. I love him. He's a great guy. We're in love. If it was an actual person, she'd be my best friend. These are my costumes. I love these two the most because I would wear this IRL in real life. And this is my work outfit. My name is Patty when I feel like I'm a Patty. And my name is Janice when I feel like a Janice. I think it's so important that theaters like Florida Rep across the country are producing new works because we, 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 need, we have a responsibility, I think, to our industry to make sure that we leave it better than we found it. So I think for us to continue to nurture new plays and new playwrights is doing just that, is when we leave, uh, we can say, I made this, this better. I, I helped in my own way. Uh, I'm very proud that I helped to, to give voice to these new characters and new playwrights. To dedicate time and money to creating new theater is, is so vital because Without it, you know, we're not going to evolve as an art form. And, um, you know, all these theaters that are involved in the National New Play Network that are part of the Rolling World premiere for Double Wide are all committed to cultivating new audience and um, new work that's current and effective. Um, I think it's, you know, theater will not exist without new work, like new blood, like new actors. Not that we don't have a huge canon of work that's available to us and wonderful, but we need to speak from this generation. Even if we're writing a historic piece about this generation, it's like who we are and what we what we have to say here now in the 21st century, what do we say about the world around us and the world that we perceive? This is just a whole different can of worms. And so being here at Florida Rep and seeing how the theater itself has evolved all these years and being a part of this new thing now three years old uh, and having been able to do Split in Three and now doing this one and being a party to the uh, Play Lab and being a part of reading all the plays and it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. And what a blessing that we have an audience who understands that. You often think about what does a theater do what is theater for a community? And when you put all the pieces together, you create magic and stories that will relate to your audiences and that will empower them and give them some insights to their lives. We have great masters, playwrights, that we've produced on the stage. But what do we do after we've used all of those great plays? And there are so many stories yet to be told. I'm so proud that we chose this play and we discovered this play. First of all, obviously you're always looking for good writing and character development. Uh, but another issue I thought that was important, that was going on in America right now, that, uh, that Double Wide really address, we hear all the time about the 99 percenters and the 1 percenters, or how eight people in the world have as much money as 316 million people uh, and uh, and double Y in a very real way uh, showed us that gulf in America of the haves and the have-nots it's political without being political it's topical without hitting you over the head and spoon-feeding you it, it sprinkles it in here and there and um, that's what you want you know and without without new plays and cultivating new work, you know, we're just staring at the same painting, just produced a bunch of different ways. I think it is such a wonderful opportunity for Florida Rep's audiences uh, and Florida Rep's artists to be working on so many new plays. Um, 
I, I think back to 2013 when we were putting the first New Play Festival together and we weren't sure um, how our audiences were going to respond, were they gonna come to buy tickets? And it's been, it's been one of the most thrilling experiences to see so much new, uh, so much new playwriting talent in this building. Uh, regional theaters like Florida Rep are the incubators for the new theater happening in America. And it's wonderful, and I have to say thanks to our donors and our supporters that have been supporting us for so long. It's wonderful that Florida Rep can say, we are now an incubator for new plays. And someday, I wouldn't be surprised if Florida Rep wins the Tony Award, uh, or a play that starts at Florida Rep wins the Tony Award for best play or best musical, and maybe someday Florida Rep will win the Tony Award for best regional theater. Uh, I think our audiences should grow old with us for the best is yet to be.